Hello, this is Nicole with Angelic Therapy and Healing, bringing you a general reading for the week of Monday, May 15th through Sunday, May 21st. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to everyone for your subscriptions, your comments. I do love hearing from all of you. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome, glad to have you here. Hopefully you will find something that will assist with your journey. For those of you that are not familiar how I do my work, I have a number of certifications, some from Doreen Virtue, Quantum Touch Energy Medicine, certified medium and angel intuitive card reader all these different things but the thing that really matters <laughs> for you guys is that uh, i only work with god jesus and the angels my strongest gift is clear audience so i hear them speak to me loud and clear uh, so i i use that to help bring you guys some information that will hopefully help you in your time of need help you get some clarity get some guidance uh, for most of you just kind of confirm what you're already getting yourselves because we all have intuition it's just some of us, it's, it's amped up a little bit more than others. And a lot of you, this, you know, I love when I get feedback of, oh, that, that's the same thing I was feeling oftentimes when I'm doing readings for clients. You know, that's the same thing I was feeling and getting. So I'm glad that for many of you, this, this gives you confirmation that you're not crazy, that all those signs and synchronicities and all the divine information that you're getting is, is on. It's spot on and you can trust it and act on it. So hopefully this does help everyone for those out there that are mothers happy mother's day this is being recorded the day before mother's day so tomorrow sunday may 14th is mother's day i do hope you all have an amazing day and you'll love the flowers i actually went to the store this week and uh i saw that they were mother's day flowers and i thought well i'm a fur mom and i love beautiful flowers so i don't care what the label is i'm going to buy them and make them my own so hopefully you all enjoy those and you have an amazing mother's day so what we're doing today is we're pulling cards, for those of you that are interested, we're pulling from Doreen Virtue's Fairy Tarot deck. Also gonna pull from her Archangel Michael deck. And at the end I'll pull a card from her, actually there's gonna be two cards because when I was shuffling those, two cards fell out on the ground. So you guys are actually getting two today. So we'll pull those from her Angel Answers and then I have also prayed over the Sibylas and when preparing, I did pray and ask that all of you receives at least one message. So hopefully this will assist everyone. Actually, probably gonna need to move those down. Okay, so let me make sure you guys can see all of those. Great, they're pretty close. Can't believe we're almost in June. Year is flying by. Okay, good. So what we have today is we have the situation, and then this is, you know, it's the foundation, but it's really, you know, what is it that created the situation? Then we have the recent past, something that you're unaware of, and then the things that are being recommended that you do from here forward. And hopefully the puppy will not knock the table down because she is adamant about getting it in my lap right now. So let's see. So starting off, the first card that we have is Four of Summer. At the bottom, it says being distracted and failing to see a magical opportunity, taking someone or something for granted, discontentment with life. And this card really does talk in the, talk about missing out on opportunities that we have, things that are right before us, things that we are missing out on, because we're, we're focused on the things that we don't have. So these gifts, these blessings, these things that are trying to come in, we just are, are not paying attention to them. And for some of you, it's like, you see how there's a little fairy at the bottom, it's like he's, he's begging her to notice him. So for many, they're saying that you, you have this gift, you have this blessing, this thing that they're just begging you to take a hold of, to do. But because you're upset about the things you lost, the things that didn't work out, you're just discontent and dissatisfied with the way things are. You're not noticing this gift that they've brought you. And for some, they're saying that Although there's some daydreaming, there's, there's like total lack of motivation and nothing's moving forward because you're just stuck in a state of discontentment. 
Um, some they're saying you feel like like a failure, like things didn't work out. And in traditional Torah, this would be cups, and cups are water, emotions. So this is very emotionally charged. So for most of you, this is love-related. But for some, it could be work. Maybe you were trying to get a job, and it didn't work out the way you wanted. Uh, or for some of you, because we have justice here, and we're going to be going over that in a minute, maybe you've been stuck in a legal battle, and it's just been dragging on forever, and it's just really drained every other area of your life. But they're trying to get you to pay attention to the signs because they're giving you a lot of signs, a lot of messages, a lot of synchronicity. They're trying to get you to go. So for most of you, they're saying that you, you've recognized, you know the signs. You're just blatantly ignoring them because you see he's begging her, just take note, just do it. So for some of you, it's just you, you're just blatantly not wanting to do it. And it's because it's coming from a state of fear. And for some of you, you're just stuck in a state of sadness, immobility, because you're just not happy with where things are. You're not happy with how things turned out. But again, they're, they're, <laughs> they're begging you. <laughs> they're trying to help you get out of that state. So she's kind of like leaning on the pillar. A lot of you have just felt like this, is, this weight is just too heavy to bear. It's too much. Now the thing that brought you here, we have two cards down here at the bottom. We have a major arcana, justice, and we have three of winter. Now, at the bottom of three of winter it says, reach out to others for comfort and love. You will grow stronger from the situation, sadness that will heal with time. And hopefully you guys can see that. And this talks about, you know, having the courage to face our fears. Uh, when we have disappointments, taking the time and allowing those disappointments to heal. Asking for help, asking for assistance, asking that God and the angels come in and, and help, help give clarity, help, help you have compassion to forgive yourself, forgive others, help you open up to the wisdom and the guidance that they're providing help not closing off your heart. See how she's very guarded? She like has the, the three wand icicles in front of her heart. But to help you not close your heart, help you open to those things, open to that guidance, open to that information. Open to the help that you're receiving. Also, forgiving yourself. Releasing the past hurts, releasing the things that ended up getting you in the situation. And if you look here, you can see that they're standing in, in front of this tree. Now, the tree is it's the holy hawthorn tree that's behind them, and it's, it's in Glastonbury. And the tree grew because Joseph of Arimathea, he was a disciple of Jesus. He actually helped Jesus get, you know, got him off the cross. But he placed Jesus' walking staff in the ground, in the dirt. And out of that walking staff became this tree. And this tree, only blooms on Christmas Day and Easter Day. Now, there was some destruction that happened to it, I think in 2010. I believe it was 2010, maybe 2012, but I'm pretty sure it was 2010. Someone ended up cutting off branches of it. But it, it, it's a tree. saying they help it. overcoming adversity ah uh, death and rebirth hmm. oh, okay we're gonna cover justice and we're gonna come back and tie that together in the winter so in traditional tarot the, the winter cards are tied to the swords and, and swords are all about being stuck in our minds, stuck in our thoughts. They're also, you know, tied to communications. But in this situation, it's a lot of internal communications. Thoughts in your own head that are keeping, keeping you stuck, keeping you from moving forward. But that's the thing with thoughts in our head. We can always change those thoughts. We can always shift things. By shifting our perspective, we will shift our, our reality. 
And oftentimes when we, when we are overcome and really weighted down by fears and worries and doubts and disappointment, we, we think that all hope is lost. We think that, okay, this is never going to get better. And, and then we, we then manifest that. We, we make things to continue to get worse and worse and worse and worse, where if we can get out of our head, shift our perspective, shift to a place of optimism, we'll be able to see things improve. But for many, it's, it's really an internal battle in your head that you're having. Now, justice at the bottom, I don't know if you guys can see it. It says, take the time to review the details carefully. You will win in the end. Fair and objective decisions. Now, this is a major arcana. This is a game changer. It's interesting. Traditional tarot, this is the justice card is actually card number, I believe, 11. Yeah, 11. But in this deck, it's an 8. An 8 infinity, never ending, unconditional love. And this is a card, so in this deck, this is talking about, you know, sticking to your principles, sticking to your values, sticking to your guns, um, standing up for yourself, standing up for the things that you want, the things that you desire, the things that you value, the things that you believe true, the things that you deserve. And also trusting that things are, are going to turn out just as you just as you desire. It also can speak of becoming clear on what you want, things balancing out. That's interesting because on this card you'll see there's these two twins. And they've got the sword in front of them. King Arthur's sword, Excalibur. And Excalibur would only help people who were worthy of the help and who were being true of their hearts, who were being honest, who were of light. You see, there's a bunch of light around that sword. But he would bless them. He would, King Arthur with his sword, Excalibur, would, would bless them, would help them. Now, justice is also a card that speaks of, see how they're holding some scales. You can see the scales. It's about karma being balanced because, you know, our actions, things that we've done in the past, they actually will determine our present or determine our future. So for some of you, the things that you're going through are because it's a, it's a karmic cycle. It's a karmic, for some it's like a karmic debt. Uh, in order to balance the scale to complete that cycle. So for some past actions or to finish that cycle, to finish those things. But for some, you know, when that karma balances out, it's actually a time for us to sit back and look at things and review, you know, okay, how did I, what was my role in this situation? How did, how did I play a part in this role? How did I, how did I create this? What am I supposed to learn from this? And to own that and take responsibility for that. And to not be stuck in a state of sadness and hopelessness. Because sometimes, you know, we will have past things that we've done, past mistakes, and, and they will, you know, bring us to our current situations, which could be very upsetting, heartbreaking. But that just gives us an opportunity to correct those things. in order for us to, to be able to move forward. Now, <laughs> okay. Okay, so for so these cards down here are, you know, they're talking about, you know, what is it, what is it that created this, this situation? What is it cr that created this discontent? So for many of you, it was, it was a karmic cycle. It was, it was a cycle that had to end. For some of you, it was, it was a love that had to end. So for some of you, very small number, this, this could be, you know, a job that had to end, a, 
a business venture, something that you were wanting to do that, that, that just had to end. No matter how hard you tried it, it just it was not going to come to fruition because it was not meant to be. It was simply something to help you learn and grow and grow from. And for many of you, it, it was it was love related. So for some of you, see how she's holding three? Some of you were stuck in a, in a love triangle. And that fell apart, that ended. That love triangle ended. But that love triangle was, was a, it was, there was karma, there were past lives, there were things that, that kept that vicious cycle going. So it's, it's a good thing that that karmic cycle ended because that's going to bring things into balance. But because it ended, you're having a hard time bringing your emotions into balance. And for some of you, this was related to a twin flame, for some twintles, where there was this, this, this karmic cycle of fearing that it's not gonna happen, fearing that it's, it's not gonna work, fearing that, you know, abandonment. Because when you look at, so when it comes to twins, what will typically happen is the divine feminine, because she's so fearful of being abandoned and not having him there for her at a, at a core soul level, she'll, she'll hold on super tight and not work on herself, not focus on herself, not stand up for her needs, not stand up for the things that she desires. And that pushes the connection away because the, the, the karma, the, the, the thing, the lesson that's to be learned in that is to love yourself. To know, especially if it comes with twins, you're never alone. You're the same. You really are truly one. You really are. You're never, you're never separated. And twins know that because you hear each other, you see each other, you feel each other. You're never going to be disconnected. Like in the Bible, it talks about what God has brought together, let no man separate. That is talking about twins. That's what that is talking about. So you're never separated. So the thing is that in order to break that cycle from the feminine perspective, you have to come to a state of loving yourself and knowing I am never separate from him. There is always unconditional love, even if a third party has been brought in. And for some, that third party is because of some karmic thing, but never going to be separate from that. And the lesson is to, to love yourself and to stand firm in the things that you desire, the things that you want. Because when you love yourself, you will set those boundaries. You will, you want those things, but it also then becomes healthy. It becomes a healthy balance, you know, cause when you're energetically, like anytime you're in a relationship, you know, we've all had relationships with someone that's like super clingy. <laughs> and well, most of us <laughs> have had a relationship with someone that's like super clingy and it just kind of turns you off. That's, that's what happens when you're trying to cling to this and energetically, oftentimes you won't even physically see it, but energetically you're pushing them away because you're holding on so tight because you're terrified that they're not going to be there. But the second you can let go and love yourself and stand for what you want, things come into balance. And on the flip side, the divine masculine, because of karmic things, that have to be healed and released. He feels afraid that, okay, it, this isn't gonna work out. I'm not gonna be able, I'm not gonna be capable of, of providing for her, protecting her, keeping her happy. It's something, because especially with twins, when you have twin flames, particularly, you've had some very difficult circumstances in, in multiple lives and in this lifetime. I mean, when, when you talk to twin flame, they have some big things that they have, huge hurdles that they've had to deal with in life. But the reason for that isn't, a lot of people think, you know, why would God allow this to happen? And again, it's something to sit back and look at from a different perspective. What is it that I'm to learn from this? How is this helping me? How is this making me a better person? How is this helping me serve others? How is this bringing me into light? Typically, twins will go through those situations because that helps them be empathetic for others. That helps them be compassionate. That helps them be loving. That helps them connect with people because twins are here to help humanity, heal humanity, lift humanity up into a place of love. But if your life's always rosy and perfect, 
you can't connect, you can't understand where people are coming from, so you really can't be of assistance. So you go through these experiences so you can help them. And, and that's the stuff with karma. So it's, it's really looking at those things. So for the divine masculine, it's this fear of, okay, you know, these things are gonna happen from the past, but for him, it's also healing, coming to a place of loving himself, knowing that this is a divine connection. It's not gonna go anywhere. You can be counted on and stepping into his power. But then the cycle of not coming from a place of love, not coming from a place of confidence, not coming from a place of trust and truth and knowing was ended. And for many of you, it was. It was a love that, that ended. It, it was said that you were in connection with this divine partner, could have been soulmate, be the partner, and it ended. For some of you, it was a it was a third party situation where there was someone that you had your hopes this was going to work out and, and it all fell apart. But it was a, it was it was it was destined to happen. It was meant to happen. It, it, it's a blessing in disguise. It really is a blessing in disguise. And if you can shift your perspective and look at it from that perspective, instead of looking at the negative of it and longing for the things that you don't have, look at it from perspective of, okay, what is it that I was supposed to learn from this? So for those of you that, you know, you had a relationship where someone was treating you really poorly, they were, they're saying for some of you like taking the cleaner. So for some of you, you were someone that was just very materialistic, very uncaring, very cold, very heartless, very mean, kind of like a big aggressive bear, but a bear to deal with. But, but you tried for so long to make it work, make it work, make it work. And it, and it just did not work. So now you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is, this is falling apart. I love that person so much. I really wanted to work out with them. It wasn't meant to work out with them. You have to let them go. For some, it's a karmic cycle, let them go. And, and it's even just look at karma. There's something you're supposed to learn from it. You're supposed to let them go because you, you're supposed to learn, I'm amazing. I'm worthy of love from someone who is going to treat me the way that I'm going to treat them. I'm worthy of someone who is warm and loving and emotional and open and caring, not someone who's cold-hearted and mean and who's going to be cruel to me and who's going to use me. So they had to fall apart so you could come into a place of balancing yourself, balancing your emotions, healing your heart, knowing I deserve better than this. So yes, it appears as a loss, but it's actually a blessing. That person was not good for you. That person's helping ultimately by leaving it all falling apart, helping you come back to a state of love, loving yourself, knowing what you deserve, staying up for yourself. And actually then you will come into that love that you desire. And for some of you that this is a a, a twin flame connection. I, I know last week's reading, I got a ton of questions from Divine Feminine asking about letting go. The letting go with the, the twin flame dynamic, it's not saying letting go, like, oh, I give up on him, this is never gonna work, and, and throwing in the towel. It, it's letting go of control. It's letting go of that fear. It's letting go of that constantly thinking, worrying, looking online, spending all your time stuck focused on them when what you're really supposed to be doing, because if you are a twin flame, you are here to be doing big things. You are here to be doing spiritual things. You will not come into union with your twin until you are focused on doing those things. So if your spiritual gifts have not opened up, if you are not doing your spiritual work, you are not ready for union because you've not healed. When you're able to get the gift, the blessing in disguise was having that fall apart initially. Yes, you're twins. You're always connected. You're always going to be connected. But you have to let him go for the time being. Let go. Trust that God is going to bring it together when the time is right. Trust that God's going to heal both of you. And focus on your healing. Because you have to remember that you're amazing. You have to love yourself again. You have to know that you're always connected. Love you. Heal the things in your heart. Because you'll notice as you start healing those things, also your, your spiritual gifts will become stronger. You'll start doing the work and things. And most of you already, throughout your whole life anyhow, you've always done things that are very caring, compassionate, and helping of other people. That, that's just the thing that twins bring. Stuff that we do. 
but you'll find that that's going to become your focus. So th there's a number of you out there, you know, this had to fall away for the time being because you're just too focused on that and that's keeping you stuck. That's keeping you unhappy in all areas of your life. So you have to, you've had to let him go. And for some of you, they brought up some situation where he went with someone else or there's been cheating or there's been these, these things going on, other people, other parties. And for some, it's just he just disappeared because they, they needed to separate that in order to help you let, let go and focus on you. Because some, for some of you, there's, there's certificates you have to get. There's training you have to take. For some of you, you have to move. You have to relocate. But you have been so stuck in a state of sadness, you, you haven't been doing anything. So they've given you, it's actually a gift in disguise. Let go, let God. Because I'll let you in a little secret. Now there might be some outliers, but nearly all twin flames, now this is twin flames, I'm not talking about twin souls. Twin flames, because twin souls, you guys are on total different, different purpose, different mission, different timelines. But twin flames, nearly all are scheduled, slated to be in union by the end of 2019. So you're going to get there, but you're only going to get there if you can let go. Be like, okay, God, I know you've got this. I know that you've brought us down here. I know we're going to be doing some amazing things together. I know we're going to have an amazing life together. I know you're going to bring us together. I love him. I love him unconditionally. But right now I'm going to let that go and not worry. And I'm going to focus on me. Because that's what's going to bring the two of you back together. So it's, it is. It's a blessing in disguise. It doesn't feel like it. It hurts. It's not easy, but it's helping propel you forward. And you just need to ask for, ask for some help. Now this is a card that's the recent past, and this is also a major arcana, and it's the Empress, and at the bottom it says, time to take action, the power of creativity, success that allows for a life of luxury. And this is a card that talks about, you know, finishing up your planning phase, like, First, when you're wanting to start something new, you want to have a new beginning, you will take the time to think out, okay, well, what are my steps? How am I going to go about this? You, you contemplate, you develop a strategy and action plan. So this card talks about, okay, now it's time for that new beginning. Because the Empress, in most cards, you know, she's pregnant. It's time to take action. It's time for that new beginning. It's time to take those action steps, even if you don't know all the details. Because sometimes we'll stay, you know, immobilized because, okay, well, I want to start my own business, but I, I don't, I don't have all the details worked out. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to get my LLC. I don't know how I'm going to create my web page. And oh, I, I, I don't even know how to. Maybe you're going to do. Videos. I don't know how to create videos. I, I don't have all the details. But when we're we're being guided to take a leap of faith, we don't always need all the details. As long as you're focused on what the goal is, then you just have faith and hope, ask God and angels to help you and start moving forward because there has to be movement to bring about that new beginning. It also talks about, you know, hard work, hard work paying off, reaping the rewards. And for some, this card does talk about pregnancy, pregnancy and birth. But that's not what they're talking about with it. Okay, so they're, they're saying recent past, a number of you have been pushed to propel forward, to step into your power, to have your new beginning. Now, for some of you, you've started, or they're pointing out, you see this like little locket right here? And it's like in the shape of a heart, but it's closed. And there's this trunk, this treasure chest behind it. It's also closed. So some of you, you have started a new beginning with a new love interest. But you're not really open to them because they're not the ones that hold the key to your heart. You're just kind of going through the emotion, going through the motions, not really emotionally opening up and connecting with them. Because it's just, if they're saying for some of you, it's like you, you feel like, okay, I have to, I have to have a, a fresh new start. I had to let this person go. So I'm going to be with someone else. I'm jumping in right away with someone else. And for some of you, it is just sex related. If you look, you've got these fairies in the back and they're scantily clad. So for some of you, you had a relationship end and you're like, okay, I'm going to start something with someone new immediately. 
It's purely sexual. It's simply uh, their rebound is what they are. They are not the one that holds the key to your heart. They are not your treasure, but you've jumped into that. And for somebody, this is just, just stepping into your power, moving forward, getting out of the state. But you've been struggling with that because you're still stuck in the state. Now, <laughs> the good news is this is a card that is something that you are not aware of. And it's the six of spring. And at the bottom it says, wonderful news is on its way. Smart choices that bring rewards, success and public recognition. Traditional throw, this would be wands. It would be fire. You know, excitement, action, creating things, moving forward fearlessly. You see, she's proudly on this horse. So she's, she's basking. She's got this glow around her. She's just basking in the glow of her accomplishments, the things that she's done, the things that she's created. And this also talks about being in the limelight, being visible, being a role model, showing other people what's possible, showing them the things that they can accomplish. Because it does, it speaks of great accomplishments, success. And the unicorn is a representation of, of purity of thought truth. Then you have rose petals down here. And it talks about, you know, love, passion, commitment. But some of you are going to have some communications coming about something from the past. Just, yeah, she's focused on the past. So for some of you, you've planted the seeds. You've worked really hard you're going to be having some communications coming in soon. Some of you it's communications from a distance, but it's truthful communication. That communication is what's going to lead to success. It's gonna to lead to things turning around. It's gonna get you out of the state. <laughs> They're saying that's gonna be the real blessing. This news is gonna bring about the blessing that you've been praying for and hoping for. Some of you are going to get back together with someone from the past. So someone from the past is going to come back with information, with communications. And that will lead to a success. That will lead to the blessings and the things that you both desire. Illumination, huh? See how she's kind of like a, like illuminated, like there's this glow around her. So I've seen some of you, you have, so think of illumination, you know, Jesus always talks about he's the light in a way. Ascension, ascension, opening up to light, opening up to love. So a lot, so a number of you, this is connected to a divine love. You've known that it was divine love. You've gone through the awakening. You're recognizing the signs from your angels, from guides, from God. Um, you know that this was a, a meant to be a divine connection. You see here by the twins, you've got the illuminated sword. She's illuminated. So, so you've known that it's meant to be. You've stayed loyal for that. Even when it seems like all hope was lost, you still stayed loyal. Loving him, having faith, knowing that this is a divine connection. This is meant to be. You've opened to your spiritual awakening. And now he's opening to his spiritual awakening. He's, uh, for some of you, he's finishing it which is why that the communications are going to come about. So he's been going through a whole lot of crud as well. He's finally recognized this connection for what it is. And you're going to get some information news. It's going to, 
it's going to illuminate the truth for both of you. And it's going to bring about tremendous success and happiness. Now, these cards up here, this is talking about what's recommended. Now, the first one you've got is Five of Summer. And at the bottom, it says, trust that there is a reason for everything that happens. Remove yourself from the negative emotions of others, focusing on that which frightens or worries you. And if you can see here, it's like she's looking out at something that's terrifying her. So she's, she's ready to take flight. She's ready to run. When instead, she should, she should stay because it's, it's an emotional fear. Because some are, this is, these are cups, this is water, this is emotions. But she's worried, anxious. This is a card that talks about, you know, life is actually serene, it's beautiful, it's calm, it's peaceful. But the problem is when we're fearful of something, worried about something, we become very anxious, very worried. We have a, a difficult time finding peace, finding optimism. We have a difficult time being hopeful, envisioning that, you know, things are going to manifest the way that we desire. We also have a hard time like letting the past go, forgetting the past. And saying that that's what needs to happen. It, it, you need to remove yourself from the negative emotions. For some of you, you need to remove yourself from negative people, negative people that have affected your life in the past. Their negative emotions that have affected you. And also to release regret, fear, worry, anxiety, doubt. Forgive past mistakes. For some of you, your past mistakes. For others, past mistakes of others. And have hope, have faith, have optimism. Know, know that it's going to turn out beautifully. Which is what they're saying with these two cards. So the first one that you have is admit the truth to yourself and act accordingly. And at the bottom, if you can get that up so you guys can read it. I appreciate your support in helping me face my feelings with grace and acceptance so that I can be lovingly honest with myself and others. Thank you, Archangel Michael, for giving me courage and strength. And you notice he's got a unicorn here as well. And she's got a unicorn there. And unicorns do speak of truth. So for some of you, there's, there's an unhealthy situation that you've had to leave, that you've had to heal. Because some of you were in a situation where you had been compromising and giving all the time, but they weren't. So they're trying to get you to, to stop compromising, to start being optimistic, to start facing your fears as well. Because some of you are very fearful. You want to have this emotional, I don't want to say thing that you desire, because they're saying for most of you this is love related. So many of you, you want to have a home. You want to have a family. For many of you, you know who this person is. You want to share that with them. But because of things that have happened in the past, you're fearful of moving forward. You're doubtful of yourself because of things that you've made, that you've been made to believe from the past. They're trying to get you to hold loving thoughts about yourself. Be of faith, be optimistic. And some of you are afraid of, of feeling emotions. Actually, they want me to read the book on that real quick. So give me one second. You've drawn this card because there's an important feeling that you've been trying to ignore. Yet try as you might to push it aside. This feeling urges you to be honest with yourself. Archangel Michael says that facing this truth will be healing and it will give you the direction and guidance you seek. You've tried to disregard your inner urging because you're worried about making life changes. Archangel Michael reassures you that he's guiding you and making sure your needs are met and your relationships stay healthy. 
So yeah, so for a number of you, you're wanting to start a family. You're wanting to start a relationship. You want to start a commitment. You want to build a home. You want to build a foundation. But you're fearful of that. And, and you're fearful because of emotional reasons. But you need to know that it's going to turn out well. This is a favorable outcome. And at the bottom, it says, thank you for the beautiful outcome to this situation, which is perfect and fair for everyone involved. Thank you, Archangel Michael, for helping me trust and have faith. So they're saying that, that you don't need to be so worried and fearful. It's already been taken care of. They've already taken care of everything. They've already got a plan in motion that's beyond everything that you've imagined, everything that you thought. And it's also going to bring your entire life. You see, he's got some scales here. It's going to bring your entire life in, into balance. Coming from a place of not being in balance to being in balance, being in balance with your emotions. See how the, the sea, the ocean is calm. But being in balance in all areas of life, family, home, love, work, they've taken care of it. You can't see it yet. You can't see the solution yet, but they're saying it's that you can't see it because you're not taking a leap of faith that they've been guiding you to take. Because you're so worried, you're so terrified, you're so stuck and chained to the past. But the faster you can let go, let God take that leap of faith, allow you, because for some of you they're saying to also allow yourself to feel emotions, allow yourself to open your heart. Because for many of you they're saying you're, you are terrified of opening your heart because you're terrified of things falling apart. Because some of you, they're saying like you, you feel like a failure because of things that have happened in your, in your past and you're terrified of repeating that. But you don't have to fear that because they've taken care of everything. You just need to take the leap of faith, let God know that it's going to turn out positively and just, they're saying go for it. Okay. So let's do some quick clarifiers and see if we can get this wrapped up. Okay, we'll... S <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> okay. Well, I was hoping to do a short reading this week, but we're going to do clarifiers, I guess, on all of them. So let's start with Four of Summer. Okay. So we have the La Superbia, Amore, and Consolante Suppressa. So... So this card, you know, it speaks of haughtiness and arrogance and vanity. And then you have amore, love, true love, requited love. And then you have the, the consolation. But it's, it's, it's a comforting surprise. Partial success. And my constellation is so for some, you know, less than expected. So for more city, this is the situation regarding love. Because there were some things that were done out of a place... really of arrogance. Arrogance, cockiness, not bending. You know, like peacocks, peacocks, the males are always more colorful than the females, but very prideful, very boastful, all about appearance. So for some of you, you had a love situation fall apart because of arrogance. Because of refusal to see, see the truth. And for some, they're saying because of, of you know, sometimes sometimes people will be really worried about, okay, how am I going to be perceived? How will people look at me? So maybe they, they have a, 
we're gonna go with love because obviously it's about love so say they have a new love interest but that person doesn't really fit their typical mold so maybe they, they typically will have someone that's blonde blue-eyed and you know she's in the medical medical career field and so then let's say he gets this person that's a divine love meant to be with but she's brunette she's really short she's got a little extra weight and maybe she works in retail so because of his arrogance and she's not what I want she's not the image that I want this isn't the image that I want to perceive what will people think of me he arrogantly walked away from her they're saying for some is now realizing what he thought was the consolation prize is not So for some, now have it in comforting and surprise that, okay, she is the one. I think I could take that leap of faith, but I'm still afraid. To, okay, so she's not a consolation. It's actually a good thing. Comforting, good surprise, good thing to know. And for some, he had to let go of someone. So they're saying for some, he had to let... Okay, so for some of you, the love triangle. <laughs> they're saying for some of you, it was a love triangle where he... And we're gonna go with he. You guys can change this, change the sex. If this sounds like your story, it's your story. So they're saying for some, it was a love triangle between a guy and two women. So he turned away the true love that he thought was gonna be like the consolation, not really what he wanted because he wanted to go with the one that, okay, he feels like he's got, that's a better image. That makes him feel better about himself. So he, he left the one and now he's realizing that it's a surprise, it's a surprise that's coming, that, that it's not a consolation. It's actually true love. But then how do you fix that? Because they're saying for all of you that this is love, you're both stuck in a state of sadness, melancholy, discontent, fear. So justice. <laughs> Okay, so we have Fortuna, La La Grazia, and the present. So, Fortuna, this, you know, speaks of luck, positive things, something that's unexpected that comes in for us. And then this speaks of, you know, lightness, tact, irritability, our ability to be sensitive, compassionate, and in presence that, you know, those are the gifts, gifts, things that are unselfish. So, let's see here that there's, let's see if I can hold these up. So you have the wheel. It really was a, a karmic cycle, something in order to move things forward, get the wheel moving forward, things had to be released. Things had to be let go of. and things that you held of great value. So cornucopia, you bring in your harvest at the end of the fall and you just load it up with all these things that you've worked so hard to have. So for some of you, you've worked so hard to have this love, to have this relationship. You've put so much into it and given it everything, but something unexpectedly came about and you had to, you had to let that person go. You had to let that thing go that you valued, but not realizing that it's actually a positive thing. Again, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing in disguise. Because by letting go, the wheel can finally move forward. But when it had to be let go, for some of you, you were angry. For some of you, there were conversations that were really, really ugly. Totally insensitive. So when it fell apart, you were insensitive to the other person. You were rude. You were cruel. You were a bear to deal with. And then now, that surprising event that made it all fall apart has actually opened you up to receive a gift, a blessing. So you've got jewelry, something that's truly of value, but the chest is open, no one's there. No one's there. 
so having this, this karmic cycle and these things fall apart. For some of you, no one's there because it really was ugly in ending. The conversations were ugly. The, it was a painful, abrupt ending. And it, and it caused a lot of hurt. For some, it was hurt. Okay, so for everyone, it was hurt in communications. The way things were said, the way things were done. And so now here's this blessed gift. That no one's receiving. No one's wearing the beautiful jewelry. <laughs> it's sitting there, just waiting to be adorned. Okay, so Empress. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So we have the Dilarante, the Il Nemico, and the La Costanza. So, let's see if I can hold all three of them up. I'm gonna try to do them all fast, see if we can get this done in under an hour. But, uh, so this is, you know, delirious, stupid actions, stupid behaviors, foolish things that we have done. And then we have the, the enemy, the male enemy, the rival, uh, resentment, concealed hatred, lies, thievery. See how he's kind of like sneaking off with the snake in his hand. And then we have, you know, Constance, Allie, shh, perseverance, she's standing firm, she's standing firm in her foundation, she's immutable. Okay. So there were some stupid things done. So for some, there was cheating, there was dishonesty, there was lying. But it was foolish behavior, stupid actions, things that were not thought through, things that happened rapidly, like a knee-jerk reaction to something. But it just created more harm. Because then he's like taking off in the middle of the night. And for some, they're saying like it, he doesn't want to own up to the things that he, like see how this is the shadow, doesn't want to own up to his dark side, doesn't want to own up to the things that he's, that he's done or the behaviors. They're saying for some, for some like that, it's alcoholism. So for some, he's, he has a drinking problem, but he doesn't want to admit that. So he sneaks off instead of sharing that and getting help. And for some, cheating, deception. But that leaves her still standing firm with the sun rising up over her. Ready to build her empire. Because she's the empress. Empresses are powerful. But empresses, their counterpart is an emperor. It's not a king. It's not a knight. It's an emperor. And he was being an emperor. Uh, they're saying for some, it's almost like in this relationship, if you look at it energetically, it's as though the, it's almost as though he was behaving like a knight. Because knights, they do, they rush in, they'll do foolish things, they're wishy-washy, they can't make up their minds, they can't make up any decisions, they can't commit to anything. But they do, they just, they just rush in and they do things that make life more difficult for them and others around them and those that they care about, because it's just foolish. Like knights, knights are young. Knights do foolish things. And they're like, oh crap, I don't want to own up to that. So now I'm just going to sneak off because I really screwed up. Again, that's behaving like a knight. Knights are also playboys, Maybe cheating, sleeping around, doing things. But, but then they take off because, okay, I don't, want to, I don't want to tell her because, dang, she's a freaking empress. And I'm not behaving worthy of that. Now, for some of you, he's starting to realize that he is better than that. Because when, when you go through someone, they you look at the, the court on tarot cards. You'll have them, you know, as you grow older, you grow wiser. So you can go from being that knight to growing up, to evolving, to awakening, to healing, to growing, to then finally becoming the emperor. 
I finally now have realized she's the other half. I've got the key to unlock that heart. I'm ready to do that, but holy crap, how do I fix this? This mess that was created. And for some of you, that's why you're stuck. So for some of you, you know, that, that all this is about being fearful of opening your heart, being fearful of taking that leap of faith, being fearful of opening. And for some of you, it's being fearful because of the things that you've done. How do we fix that now? But you fix that with truth. You fix that with owning it. I mean, we all mess up. We all do stupid things. We do. All of us. <laughs> None of us are exempt from that. We all screw up. We all do things foolish. But when we've healed, we've grown, we've become better us, then we have to take responsibility. We have to take ownership. We have to take the actions. We have to have those difficult conversations. Sometimes we do have to end things with people. Because they're saying for some of you, there's, there's also someone that you like haven't had a final conversation to finally cut that loose. But we do that. We cut the things loose that we have to cut loose. We have conversations to mend things, to heal things, to be like, okay, I really screwed up. But we do that when we've grown and we've evolved, when we're no longer that, you know, immature knight. When we, fun we have grown and we've developed and we've stepped into our power, we've suddenly become the emperor or the empress. We are in our power. An emperor and empress, they are each other's other half. They are a couple. They are very powerful. But they have strength. They have courage. They have perseverance. You're saying for some, she's just continued to stand here like, okay, I'm just going to hang out while he gets his act together. <laughs> and I'm just going to start building, putting this back together for myself. I'm going to re start rebuilding my castle. Even though I'm alone, I'm going to start rebuilding my castle. Because I'm a freaking empress, and that's what I'm going to do. While he steps up into stepping into his power. Because that's how we grow. We all have to go through things to grow, to develop. It takes time. And we don't get there at the same time, especially if you're twins, twin flames, and even twin souls. You don't get there at the same time. The feminine, she's going to start before him. But rest assured, he's going to catch up. You're the alpha male, alpha female. You are each other's other half. You are divine counterparts. He will catch up and he'll be doing everything in alignment with you. And for some, <laughs> you just had to uh, be waiting and focusing on you. Now we have, for Six of Spring, we have Stanza, La Fidelta, and Alegrisa at Coria. So you have the room. No one's there, no one's speaking. There's no communications, like communications went awry. Also speaks of, you know, intimacy. But there's no one there. It's not all messed up because someone just had an intimate rendezvous with each other. It's messed up like an argument. But then you have loyalty. faithfulness, devotion, and then you have happiness of the heart. You know they were saying earlier that she's been loyal. She stepped into her awakening. She's just been waiting for him to go through his awakening and his process as well. So for some of you, the person that you have been loyal, things fell apart. And, and for some, it fell apart. It was very ugly the way it fell apart. And it hurt. But you remained loyal to that person. And you're getting news now from that person that is going to lead to happiness of the heart. Celebration. And they're saying for some celebrations, you could be having. Marriage celebrations. <laughs> okay, so for some of you, yeah, you're gonna have marriage celebrations. It'll go swift. It's gonna go very quickly because uh, for some, it's meant to be. It's just been a factor of divine timing at play. That's all, divine timing. 
there were parts and pieces that had to fall in place for both. You know, we were talking about earlier, this had to fall apart because there's work that she had to do, there's work that he had to do. You both have now done your work, and now you're gonna get some information that's going to make you both celebrate, but going to make both of your hearts happy. And celebration of those around you. But this happiness, it is really talking about happiness of the heart, love. Celebrations about love. Okay, last one. Let's get it wrapped up. Okay, five of summer. So we have the Domestico, Casa, and Prigione. So, let's see if I can get these held up. So the Domestico, this is someone that's that's the helper. That that assists like the servant. The home. You know your foundation, your home. And then the prisoner, but he's giving himself stuck. He's he's making himself his own prisoner. Hmm. Okay. So for some of you, they're saying. That, that you've always helped other people. So for some of you, you were even in a marriage or relationship with someone and you were in it because you felt like you were the white knight on the horse. You were there to help. You were there to help her. She would call on you when she needed help and, and that was very rewarding for you. But it really wasn't a happy home and it fell apart. But, but you've been stuck because of how that made, made you feel. But for some of you, you've given everything to this person or some the people related to that person. You've always put everyone else's needs above your own. You want to, you want to have a family. You want to have a home. You want to have a firm foundation. But you've always been giving that up because you're constantly giving to everyone else. You're not helping yourself. You're not doing for yourself. You now have an opportunity to build that home. Uh, for some of you, they're saying you're going to have to rebuild the bridge, but you'll be able to. And actually, it's with communications. Blue is the color of communications. You have the opportunity now. There is, there is someone there for you to build a home with, to build a firm foundation that won't crumble, but you're still stuck and chained to the past. Now they're saying for some of you, you're still stuck because maybe you're still financially or... They're saying for some of you, it's like this, this person from the past still is trying to guilt you into helping them. So even though you have someone that you want to build a new future with, you're fearful because you keep going back to help that person. But they're saying for some of you, they've, you've recently stopped that, which was the thing that you need to do, but it's, it's almost like you haven't completely, completely broken free of that. Because there's the business thing of you feeling indebted like you owe them. But in order for you to step in and create a new, a new beginning with someone else, to have that family, to have that home that you do want, that you desire, and for maybe you were trying to create that with a person in the past, you're going to need to Stop giving to that person to break yourself free of that. For some of you, they are congratulating you because you have broken free of it. So you, you had this person. For some of you, it even could have been a, a group of people tied to that person where you were constantly taking care of them, providing for them. You thought that that would be the foundation of your home, but it wasn't. It fell apart. They're congratulating you because you did finally let that go. You have someone you want to build a future and a home with. But you're afraid to open up your heart. Remember again, she's looking like she's terrified, like she's gonna run. You're afraid of opening up your heart, opening up your emotions because you're still hurt from the past. Because the person that you were with in the past made you feel as though you were a horrible husband or you were a bad provider or you couldn't be counted on or you were just a disappointment. For some of you, they were very cruel and, and they would cut to the bone with words. 
so you're terrified that, okay, if I take this leap of faith, what if it ends up being a, a mess like the last one? But you have to trust. You have to take that leap of faith and have trust. And you also have to admit your feelings. And so for some of you, you, you do, you have to forgive yourself from the past. So for some of you, there are things that have to be forgiven from the past. You know, they were saying build a bridge. So for some of you, the person that you, they're trying to guide you to, you're going to have to, you're going to have to communicate the truth with them. You're going to have to forgive yourself as well. You have to rebuild and communicate the truth with them. They're saying it's not going to be that hard. It's not going to be as hard as you envision. Because some of you, they're saying, because you're so terrified. So you've got this, this, this potential partner. And they're saying for most of you, it's actually it's a divine love, divine connection that they're trying to guide you toward. You get a lot of signs, a lot of synchronicities. You keep ignoring that because you're, you're afraid of, of repeating the past. You're afraid that, okay, if I take that leap of faith, because I, I feel like this is the one, I feel like, I'm getting blasted by God and the angels all the time that this is the person for me. I really want to take that leap of faith. But last time I did, it really ended up bad. So instead, I'm going to run and do, do things that aren't good for me. Throw myself in drinking, throw myself in other relationships, throw things that are just making it worse. But they're saying that you have to trust. You have to stop running. You have to trust. You have to let go of the fear, let go of the negativity, let go of the worry, let go of the doubt. Be honest, be truthful, take the correct action steps and know that it's going to turn out well. It's kind of like the swords earlier, this, this prigione, many of you it's because you're a prisoner of your own thoughts. You have to get out of your own head. And when you do, everything that you've been wanting, you will have. Everything that you want, you will have. Your entire life is going to come into balance. That home, that family, that thing that you've desired, you'll have it. But you have to set yourself free. Okay, so let's real quick pull Actually, you guys get two, because again, when I was shuffling, praying over them, we had two pop out. So let's go ahead, think of a question. If there's something that has not been answered in this reading, think of a question real quick. Okay, first one is, it's up to you. And the next one, and I'll read these here in a second. I just can't seem to hold them at the same time we get the book, is yes. And it's a yes with an exclamation. There are actually two different yeses in this book. And it's a deck of cards. And this one is the like, oh yes, absolutely, firm yes. Okay, let's read those real quick. Okay, first one. It's up to you. The end result of the situation you asked about is entirely in your hands. Again, remember they're saying you have to free yourself. You're the only one keeping yourself stuck. They've taken care of everything for you. You just have to trust. Communicate, take, take, take that leap. You can affect the outcome by taking a proactive approach to solving any challenges. Stand in your own power and have confidence that you have what it takes to bring about a happy ending. Don't wait for someone else to rush in and take charge. In order to come to a successful conclusion, this situation requires your unique perspective and experience. Okay. And... Next one. Okay. Yes. Hold on, so you guys need graphics. Bravo, the decision you've made is the right one. There's no need to continue to sort through additional options. You know what to do and you should move forward with your plans. You've made the correct choice for your personal growth and development. 
However, some decisions can be a true challenge. If the task ahead of you is daunting or even sad, then proceed with your plans in a way that is life-affirming and self-loving. Ask your angels to be with you every step of the way and don't hesitate to call upon friends or family for support. So, hopefully that helps everyone. I wish you all an amazing week. Again, happy Mother's Day to all the mamas out there. Enjoy your day. Go get yourself some breakfast, lunch, and uh, I wish all of you an amazing week filled with lots of love, joy, and blessings.